Um, I'm Ricky Ott, R-I-K-I-O-T-T, -T, and I'm with Cordova District Fishermen United. What's today's date? Beats me. It's September 9th, 1989. Okay, that's all I need. All right, great. Ricky, it's, uh, it's now September. It's a long time after the spill. Why protest now? What's, what's the goal here? Well, now is an appropriate time because they're, they're talking about demobilization and pulling out from the cleanup. And everyone's attention is focused on the beach cleanup. And there's so much more to it than that. A large part of the problem is cleanup of state and federal legislation to prevent something like this from ever happening again. So we need to refocus people's attention on what's really going to be effective in preventing something like this from happening again. What kind of things in the, in the state legislature or in the Congress that are you concerned about? It changes every week, but right now the main concerns are the House, United States House of Representatives, is developing a bill, the equivalent of the Senate bill on Superfund, which creates a fund to clean up oil spills and compensate individuals and there's simply not enough money in the fund that Senate established and the House wants even less than that. So we need we need tougher spill legislation. We need more money in the Superfund bill. Also we're asking that states' rights are not preempted. This is really important we feel and the House is moving to preempt states' rights. The other thing that you were protesting today is, is there was a there's a foreign flag vessel taking on oil at the Alieska terminal. Why do you oppose having foreign flag vessels and why is that unusual? It's unusual because this is the only state in the nation that allows foreign flag super tankers to carry oil from one of its ports. This tanker today specifically is Liberian registered, Italian crewed, and I'm sorry, Israeli registered, Liberian flagged, and Italian crewed. So if this tanker or one of the other foreign flag super tankers hits Bly Reef or has a tanker spill, who would pay? It would just be an incredible legal snarl. I mean, we would have attorneys, um, well, we, we would just be enmeshed in this legal nightmare, and I don't know. Meanwhile, oil would be spilling everywhere. And are you, asked, are you hoping the Congress will eliminate the foreign flag tankers from the Alieska terminal? We're hoping that Congress makes industry responsible for any and all risks associated with marine transport of oil. If they want to bring in foreign flag tankers, that's fine, but post a bond. Be finance, have the financial resources to deal with a spill up front. I mean, we want to know where that money's going to come from, and we want the oil industry to assume the risks. It's their game. Ricky, tell us a little bit what, how this took place, this event today. You mean that I thought it went great. I, it started actually last night when all the boats, it was so foggy in Cordova, we didn't really have a clear idea who was leaving. And everybody came out of the fog into Jack Bay, and one by one we just started rafting up until we had a 12-boat raft. We only had one anchor down, and we sat there. This community finally is having fun again. It's something we almost forgot how to do. And we sat there stuffing rocks from a treated beach that's been pronounced clean. Um, in 650 Ziploc bags, which we're mailing out to our all congressmen. Um, actually, today they're going out. So we just sat there eating sushi and with the music on and the fog all around us. And it was a, it was a great evening. And then we got the banners going this morning. We got them all on boats. And the banners all look good. And everybody just started getting excited. And we took off. And everybody was in control the whole time, followed the the regatta rules that I, you know, sort of agreed upon with the Coast Guard and you know it was quality, not quantity. We didn't have nearly as many boats as we wanted. A lot of it's due to the halibut opener. But it's quality, not quantity. I think it went really well. Uh, the tanker that was in today, uh, that was a foreign flag tanker. Uh, elaborate on that tanker, what size and, and so on. I believe that was a 1.8 million uh, barrel tanker, which is 50% more than the Exxon Valdez. It's also one of the flagships for the, for the Amarada Hess Oil Company. It's run by Leon Hess, and it's the Northern Lion. So that was, um, that was one of the boats we wanted to target on, actually, and it was there for us. I thought industry was cooperating with us today very nicely. So that was, an, uh, that was a foreign flag tanker? Yes, that was in one of the Israeli-registered 
Liberian flagged tankers crewed with Italians that comes into the, into the port to transport oil to St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Isles. When it's there, it it's, reef goes through the topping plant and is put back on U.S. hull vessels and transported into the United States. So if something would happen to that, uh, you, you're saying in, in uh, encapsulized for me, uh, where the responsibility would lie if that oil was, was to fall? I think the way the rules are now, it lies with the vessel owners, but the question is, I guess that would be Israel, if it's Israeli registered, but that's the question. <laughs> Who is responsible in the event of a spill? Right now, we don't know. Has a foreign flag to ship ever dumped oil in Alaska waters before? I have no idea. What about this? Oh, one of these, these particular foreign flag? Um, I don't know. What actually. about the spill in Cook Inlet in 1987? That was Glacier Bay. That was a third party charter. And what happened in that was the first people on scene were lawyers. And they were, <laughs> they obviously weren't there to direct the cleanup. I mean, they were there to, to determine financial responsibility. So it's kind of a big gap there, too. There's a lot of third party charter tankers that come into this terminal that have kind of marginal financial backing in the, if there was a big spill, if they spilled. Ricky, what's your position with the uh, CDFU? I'm, I'm a member of the board. You're a board member. Do you, to the best of your knowledge, did, did those people in Cook Inlet ever receive any retribution, the fishermen? One or two did, but I just gave a talk in February and I called over there and asked that same question and no, most of them, it's still in litigation. So the same type of thing it has happened before in Alaskan waters? Yes, that's correct. And people have not been compensated? That's correct. And so the demonstration today was to try to keep that from happening again? Part of the demonstration was for that, but a main part of the protest, we're protesting unresponsible development. If the oil industry is going to do business in this state, keep your promises. We, it's, it's like an attitude problem. Some of the technology, they have the technology to be doing things better than they're doing, like at the terminal. Keep up to date. Keep, keep the technology state of the arts. It's, it's an attitude problem. We want this attitude changed.